One very essential aspect of life is procreation or the act of bringing forth offsprings. This is necessary for the perpetuation of our species. Now, with meiosis and sexual reproduction, an organism is able to reproduce and create genetically individual offsprings. During sexual encounter between a male and a female, spermatozoa find their way into the female genital tract and become prepared for fertilization with a process called capacitation. So spermatozoa or sperm cells are stored in the epididymis located posterior to the testis. They pass through the ductus deferens during ejaculation and mix with secretions from the seminal vesicles, the prostate and the bulbourethral glands as they are released into the vagina. With this and a possible signal from the female environment, the outer surface of the acrosome becomes modified by the removal of glycoproteins and proteins. This is the final maturation step of the spermatozoa. Now the spermatozoa become hyperactive and make their way through the cervix, the uterus and into the uterine tube to find the ovum. An ovum is produced by the process of ovulation in the ovarian cycle where the graphene or the matured follicle rupture releasing the ovum or the secondary oocyte into the waiting arms of the uterine tube via the fimbriae. The ovum is moved towards the ampulla of the uterine tube where it has roughly 24 hours to meet with a spermatozoan to become fertilized. The oocyte is surrounded by cumulus cells which is commonly known as corona radiata from the matured follicle. So the spermatozoa must break through this outer layer to reach the oocyte itself. When a spermatozoan succeeds in this, it then encounters the zona pellucida surrounding the plasma membrane of the oocyte, thereby insulating it from the external environment. Now the spermatozoan binds to the zona pellucida and is triggered to begin the acrosome reaction. The acrosomal cap of the head of the sperm breaks down releasing enzymes that dissolve the zona pellucida locally. Now this allows the spermatozoan to enter the oocyte. Once the sperm gets through the zona pellucida, the membranes of the egg and the sperm meet and fuse. The contents of the sperm are now within the egg as its plasma membrane is left behind and lost. Cortical granules containing enzymes are released from the egg. This causes the binding proteins of the entire zona pellucida to become altered, thereby preventing further sperm from binding. So the zona pellucida, the acrosome and the cortical reactions work together to prevent fertilization by multiple sperm, which is known as dyspermia or polyspermia. This is a very important process in mammalian and for that matter human reproduction because hundreds of sperm reach the egg at the same time. So the event of a dyspermy would create an embryo with three haploid sets of chromosomes or a triploidy that would be extremely unlikely to survive. Now, during meiosis 2 of the development of an ovum, the secondary oocyte is pulsed pathway through the process at metaphase 2. So, with the fusion of the spermatozoan cell membrane, the oocyte is triggered to continue meiosis. The two cells that result from this division are the definitive oocyte and the second polar body. The second polar body receives little cytoplasm and this allows the definitive oocyte to maintain its size. The fertilized oocyte contains the DNA of the spermatozoan and the DNA of the oocyte itself. So in principle, it contains a diploid set of chromosomes. Although the DNA has not been reorganized yet, fertilization has formed a genetically unique individual. So we call this unique new cell a zygote. The spermatozoan's nucleus 
becomes the male pronucleus and aligns with the female pronucleus. Each pronucleus is haploid at this stage. So the two pronuclei lose their nuclear membranes and their DNA is duplicated. This takes approximately 18 hours to occur. Now the DNA condenses into chromosomes. Consequently, the paternal and maternal chromosomes become aligned together on the equator of the cell. Sister chromatids from each chromosome are pulled towards either end of the cell as observed during anaphase in mitosis. Now mitosis continues and the cell is split into two. With fertilization, the diploid number of the chromosomes has been restored by combining chromosomes from the father and the mother. The spermatozoan will bring either an X or a Y sex chromosome to the oocyte's X sex chromosome. Therefore, the spermatozoan determines the sex of the embryo by the formation of either an XY for male or an XX for a female pair of sex chromosomes. An extrauterine pregnancy or an ectopic pregnancy is as a result of the fertilized ovum implanting outside of the uterus. A fertilized ovum may implant into the uterine tube, the cervix, the ovary or even the abdomen. Tubal pregnancies within the uterine tube are the most common type. Typically, an ectopic pregnancy is not viable and in extreme cases can lead to the death of the mother. For in vitro fertilization techniques, sperm must be artificially induced to begin capacitation. With capacitation, the sperm is primed to undergo the acrosome reaction when it meets the ovum. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.